Hello there, YouTubers. So what I want to talk about today is a game that I created using the same game concepts that I demonstrated the last time. And this game is a little bit different. It's not an original idea. I think there's a game uh, by the same name uh, in, in either Android or iPhone. But I just want to kind of demonstrate how to do it with text. So the idea is very simple. Of course, you can always make it better. And if you were to create a real game, well, you would actually need graphics and sound and stuff like that. But with uh, what we have, Bare Bones C++, uh, let's go ahead and take a look. So let me demo the game first. So if I enter the game, which I already compiled, uh, you can see how it plays. And I've just used one key. I'm using the J key to move around from one wall to the other. And you can see the objects falling down. They're not really falling down because he's scaling up a wall and those are spikes. So anytime he hits a spike, he has to jump to avoid it. And if he hits one, like you see there, it begins another line. So, oh, and got hit again. And of course, eventually he runs out. So let's go ahead and end this game and take a look at the code. So I have the code here, and this is basically what we did the last time. Same, same concept. It's not a lot of code. It's actually only about, so you can see 322 total lines. That's not even 322 lines of code, but it is some code nonetheless. So you can see the libraries that I included here are the standard libraries. So STDIO, STDLib, these are standard C libraries. This one's kind of unique. This is if you're in Windows. So if you're going to uh, try to compile this game in something like Linux, then this wouldn't help you. You would have to do something different. And I think this, I'm not sure if this is Windows specific, but of course we need the string library. And there's also someone else that's um, making videos out on this uh, with more advanced concepts. So. I'll put the link down below if you're interested in watching his videos. He's certainly a lot better than I am at this, but this is enough to get you started. And like I said, this is using some of the concepts that we used the last time. So for example, print at X, Y is just going to print whatever string we pass into it at the X, Y coordinates of the console. And then we have certain things like display score to display the score, init to initialize, zero lives to tell you if you actually have zero lives and set game to start over get input this is so you can get input from the key without actually interrupting the flow of the game so the game continues to display everything and if it has input it gets it if it doesn't it doesn't update player and passing in the character that's of course just to update the player's position in this case the player is your x character that's jumping across the walls and the update the walls that's so that it can look like it's scrolling down so of course you see other things very english like Increment score, decrement lives, you draw. Of course, every time we draw, we're gonna draw on the screen and draw a wall. You notice there wasn't a lot of flickering, so there's a bit of a trick to drawing what we need. So we have draw and draw wall, draw the ninja. And of course, we got clean up and clear screen and so on. So to display messages like the scores and all that stuff, we're gonna need uh, to have the Y offset uh, to display a message and of course we update the ninja I thought we had update we have update player and update ninja so maybe I don't need this I'm not sure I think this might be left over because we actually have update ninja here and of course we have to check for collision detection like you would in any good game so let's take a look at some of these functions just kind of walk our way down so one of the first things we want to do is hide the cursor and this is a code to hide the cursor uh, another thing is if you want to really look at this code and run it, it's on one file. So I'm going to post a link to the code, post it online on GitHub, and then you can download it there. So this is just to hide the cursor, standard stuff, get the handle. You notice that I'm getting the handle and I'm storing it for it's sort of like a global. So I'm getting a handle there. And then once I have the handle, I just continue reusing that handle. And then I'm just setting the the handle to be hidden so I set it to visible false and I hide it and I'm saying my screen width of course I don't truly don't have a screen width I'm just saying that I'm going to have 12 columns and 20 in height 20 rows and that's that 
so then I have things like how many lives, the game state, when uh, a variable for game state over, game state playing, goal points, and so on. And so my avatar is going to be two characters, of course, one for the character and one for the no character, and the game over string, just things like that. So for the left wall, in this case, I have a left wall and a right wall, and I just made them arrays of characters of 60 so and the reason for that is because what we're going to have is we're going to have either a spike or a wall and even though arrays are normally you think of array going across in columns we can still display it as rows going down and that's what we're going to be displaying so now for the spike we have a different character depending on what we want to display for the character we're going to have a left spike and a right spike and so for the ninja we have two characters the wall y position of course because the wall is scrolling down we need to have a y position and we need to know where the ninja is at all times so we need to have a ninja x and a ninja y now we could use structs for the ninja to have the x and y position but i wanted to keep the game really simple and of course if you use structs and you know how to use structs by all means go ahead and use structs but i just didn't want to do that to um avoid getting into deeper concepts or more advanced concepts in c so we have the ninja speed and the ninja delta that's basically uh where uh it's moving how fast it's moving in that direction and of course we need to know where the left wall spike and the right wall spike is so and this immunity countdown is basically to say okay while it's counting down the spikes don't affect the ninja so it has to give you enough time to get your bearing and figure out what you have to do because maybe you just lost a life and the immunity countdown starts counting down while the immunity is going on that means the ninja cannot be affected by the spikes so if we walk into the main the first thing you can you see you see the program do is we initialize well actually we initialize here and we have the a system call to clear the screen and then uh, then we begin our game loop. So this is just a way to have an endless loop, but it's not truly endless because we're gonna break out of it. And of course we have an immunity countdown and it counts down as we go. Our immunity countdown uh, is, you can see the values in init. So whatever we set that to, that's how many frames it's going to execute. It's going to count down when it's, uh, as long as it's greater than zero, it's an immunity. So we count it down. So we clear the screen. Now you may want be wondering why I clear the screen this way here and clear the screen that way here. But this clear screen is just erasing what's on the screen instead of instead of actually uh, doing a system call because this call is very expensive. So we don't want to call this because that's very expensive. So we do we do it a little bit different, and we'll get into that as we move down our code. So we clear the screen, we get the input, and just the character. We check the game state if it's over. We um, and you enter a queue, or the user, the player enters a queue, then we just go ahead and clear the screen and we break out of the game loop. Here we clear the screen, we update the wall, we update the ninja, and the ninja's uh, position is updated based on whatever was entered. And keep in mind that there's only one key, one, one user input here, and that's just the J key to say, okay, jump left, jump right. Since we're only jumping left, jumping right, there's no need to, um, have two different keys we just use the same key over and over just a j and then of course we draw one of the things we do next is we check if we check if the ninja collides with the spike and it's not in the immunity state so the immunity is less than or equal to zero we decrement the lives and we reset the immunity countdown so that it'll be in an immune state so it won't be affected by that if there's zero lives left we set the game state over message and we just go out now this sleep here is just so that we can have something to slow the game down a little bit because we don't want frames back to back and this is a millisecond so every hundred milliseconds it'll uh, execute another iteration of the loop and of course we do our cleanup finally here so we look at our initialize we just we're, we're just basically initializing all our values here and you can see where we have everything initialized, how many game points, the game state, and so on. Of course, the ninja, we initialize it at half the width of the 
vertical of the screen height, we're going to set our ninja. And our ninja's X, we always know it's going to be at 1, right? Well, it's not always at 1. Depending if it's moving left or right, it's going to change. But we initialize it on the left wall. And left wall spike equals 0. Right wall spike equals 0. And I don't remember exactly what this does, but we'll take a look in a second. So, and let's take a look. Let's see. So the game state is game state playing, wall, Y position, minus 20. That means that our wall, since our wall starting before it hits the screen, we set it up as minus 20. And I think our wall height, total height, I think, I believe if we go back to our wall, you notice it's 60. So that means that it begins actually 20 above. But our wall height is actually, our screen height is actually only, and I don't see my screen height here. Do we have screen height set here? Uh, screen height is set to 20, so it's 20. Our wall is actually 60. That means it gives us enough room so that there's always something going on prior to it. It's at minus 20, so it starts at that position. And it just starts kind of scrolling down. So, uh, and we just start copying the the left spike and the right spike there. Um, and you can see our walls here. Since our character is it's a character of 60, we just have these and everywhere where there's this. That's a wall, and this is a spike, each character. So this is the way we're drawing. It's kind of like a map of drawing everything, and that wall is just going to be scrolling down. So here we have zero lives. And, of course, that's very simple. If lives equal zero, we return one. We're using one for true and zero for false. Uh, you can see where we set the game state. Nothing uh, unusual there. The get input, as we have in the previous game, you know that... This KB hit just tests to see if a key was pressed. If it does, it gets the character. If it doesn't, it just trucks right along. That way the game key can keep playing. Score, very simple. Draw, of course, it just costs a whole bunch of other draws. Draw wall, draw ninja, draw score, and so on. And of course, you know what our print at XY does because we used it in the last game. If you don't, Tim, you may want to take a look at that game uh, in, in the same channel. And it just basically takes and outputs the character at whatever Y position you we tell it to display score. Now, this is what I was talking about, clear screen here. What we do is we know how big our screen is. Our screen we know is like 20 by or 10 by 20. So we just draw a whole bunch of uh, strings starting from one position all the way down. So here we're clearing the screen. And I believe the only reason that we have to clear the, the, the first three rows is because that's just a score and another line below it and so on. So we don't have to clear the entire screen because the wall's going to get the one on the left is going to get redrawn, the one on the right is going to get redrawn, the ninja is going to get redrawn. So we really don't have to clear everything. We just clear the first three rows and then we the wall is going to clear itself because we're going to be drawing over everything that's on the wall so we don't have to clear everything but if you really did have to clear everything on the wall then you might want to go uh maybe a nested loop where you actually or not a nested loop but uh you go through however many rows you have so if you had like 20 rows you would go through 20 rows and clear them all but in this case we only need to clear the first three we don't have to clear anything else and that's really one of the big things about this game Display message, of course, you know that we just reuse print at XY. Display countdown, and all we're doing is we're taking the immunity countdown and uh, doing some math here. So we take and divide it by 10, we take the buffer, and we say, okay, the countdown is changing. So every 10 frames, we uh, change the countdown. So that way, that's the, the reason for that is because the reason we don't just update the countdown, let's say to 1,000 and then count down from there, is because we actually want it to look like it's counting down in seconds, like three and two and one and so on. That way, if we divide it by three, we know it's every three milliseconds. So if we divide it by 10, then we know that we have a full second in between. And that's how we clear it. Of course, update the wall. All we're doing is updating the white position based on the speed. And the wall is going to uh, basically scroll down. And so to update our ninja, and we take a look at whatever was entered, if it's J, and if it's actually playing, we update the ninja to move uh, left to right. So if the ninja x equals 1, then the 
ninja speed equals this and we have the ninja delta x equal to the ninja delta based on the speed and we increment it and it's going to move to the right if the ninja was on the other side on the other hand then we're going to update the, the speed to be negative so it'll move to the left side of the screen and if the ninja x less than e equal to one then we just want to set it at the wall we want to set it at the first position and that's what moves the ninja left to right so you can kind of take a look at this and of course we look at the lives so if the immunity countdown is greater than 10 lives less than three then we do this if we have a countdown that le that's less than 10 and immunity countdown less than 10 is between 10 and 1 then we know we don't uh, we just set the ninja at, at the one position so uh, to check to see if it collides is very simple in this case since we have full characters we know when it's going to be right the ninja x is going to be on the on the left wall spike wherever that spike is and the reason that we had the left wall spike and the right wall spike is because we know that it's got to be at the same row where the ninja resides and that's the reason that we say okay the, if there's a spike there yes or no if it's there's not a spike there's going to be zero if there is a spike there's going to be one and that's in our game update where we're going to make that determination to set the le left wall spike and the right wall spike so if the ninja's on the left we check to see if it's in the same position where the left wall spike is and we return one if he's if the ninja's on the right hand side of the screen screen with minus one and there's a spike there then we return one also otherwise we return zero for false so when we draw the wall very simple all we do is uh, create a row uh, and then we just go ahead and uh, draw everything out we'll draw the wall screen out so if you take a look at this logic all it is is we're drawing 20 rows and we're actually moving the spike and here we take and when we find if the left wall index equals that and if it's at right in the middle of the screen which is where the ninja's position is we say there is a left wall spike same thing with the right wall spike we determine if there's a right wall spike on the right that's where we actually set the right wall spike and we say yeah that equals one but you notice that we initialize left wall spike and right wall spike to zero if it ever finds that the the spike is there we set it to one you don't want to do reset it every time in this loop because otherwise it's always going to be true or or it's always going to be false so you don't want to do that once it's set it's set and you know there's a spike on the left or on the right and the ninja happens to be there then the ninja dies so to draw the ninja we just very simple we just draw the ninja so that's really all there is to this game like i said i'll post a link to the game and let me know if you can get it to work if you have any questions if you can't get it to work then uh i'd be glad to help you so so yeah uh just shoot me an email or just put a message in the comments and i'll take a look and see what you have i would challenge you to try to create the game on your own and see if you can figure it out if not you can always cheat or even if you take this and make it work then just make it work but that's all i have this time around and uh good luck and if you haven't subscribed go ahead and subscribe if you like it give it a thumbs up if you don't feel free to leave a comment give it a thumbs down it's okay uh, as long as you're viewing and that's what matters hopefully you learn something thanks for watching